The film begins with a flashback to a year earlier, when a red-haired middle school boy named On Ice is being beaten up by a bunch of men in the middle of the road when it is pouring. After the altercation, he was soaking wet on the side of the street when a girl approached him and offered him an umbrella and a drink. In the present, we meet Kogir, a girl who was about to start high school and is known to be a coward. We then see On Ice, who is at the same school as Kogir, and is known to be a rogue who picks fights for no reason. While fighting a gang of middle school boys, On Ice is thrown to the ground alongside Kogir, causing her to be terrified that she couldn't get up right away. Kogir was often teased by her classmates, and when she couldn't take it, she would close her eyes and cry out her uncle's name, Shu. Kogir is about to experience a major transformation when Onis asks her to meet him outside the school's gym. Onis presents her with flowers, and she is astonished to learn that Onis is interested in dating her with marriage ambitions. She refused at first, but because she was a scaredy cat, she accepted it and requested that he would be careful with her. When Kogger gets home, she always gets welcomed by her uncle, Shu, which causes her to feel very happy. It appears that Kogger has developed feelings for her uncle as he appeared to be the one looking out for her when she was young. The next day, Shu makes a delightful bento for Kogger. She is startled to see Onais waiting for her around the corner as she walks towards school, wondering whether to tell him about the person she truly likes. He invites her to accompany him to school. During lunch, Onis shows off his cooking talents by producing a homemade lunchbox for her. Onis cooks meals for him and his mother. Because the bento tasted so good, Kogir encouraged Onis to follow his passion of becoming a chef. She then admits to being afraid of him beating her if it tasted awful. Onis claims that he only got involved in the fight because those people were picking on a new student. Kogir questions why Onis chose her because she thinks she is just a scaredy cat that no man would want but Onis disagrees. Onis promises Kogir that he would no longer engage in meaningless fights and that he will protect her from now on. Kogir realizes that Onis was a good guy. Another day comes, Kogir gets picked on again by her classmates because of being with Onis, but Yashiro tells them to back off. As Kogir thanks her, Yashiro tells her that she didn't do it for her and that she was just tired of people judging others with who they choose to be with. When Kogur returns home, she sees Shu talking to a lady she recognizes. Shu informs her that the woman is a former co-worker. When Shu sits alongside her and their faces are close to one another, she feels a bit gushed. Kogur expresses gratitude to his uncle for always being there for her when her parents died when she was six. Back at school, students were separated into groups to participate in an activity that would strengthen their bonds with their peers. Because they had trouble finding a group at first, Kogir, Onais, Ishiro, and Misaki were forced to be in the same group. When his fellow students mock them for being the class leftovers, Misaki storms out. Misaki studied in Canada during middle school and was a loner who didn't want to be friends with anybody, but Onis truly offered him companionship. During their activity, Misaki is bullied by his classmates and throws his dream catcher into the river. Onais saves him from drowning as well as his dream catcher keychain which a friend gave him before leaving Canada. Misaki accepts Onis after showing his genuine affection for him at that point. As they return to their campsite, Onis forgets his jersey so Kogir offers to grab it for him. Kogir got lost and became trapped inside a dark tunnel, causing her to recall the trauma of losing her parents when she was a child. As she cries while screaming out Xiao's name, Onis comes to her rescue. She musters up the confidence to confess to Onis that she likes someone else. Onais understood as he remembered her crying out Sha Chan. She then explains to him that Shu is her uncle, and that since he took on the roles of her mother and father, she has come to feel a certain way about him. She also explains that Shu quit his work to open a cafe in order to take care of her. Despite Kogir rejecting him, he asks if they could still be friends, and she gladly agrees. Yashiro and Misaki checked on them, and despite their unique personalities, the four have formed a remarkable friendship. Inside the classroom, Kogir tells Yashiro about Omnes, adding that he is a very special friend with a great personality, but she is unclear if she wants to date him. Yashiro advises her to pretend to kiss him, and the fact that she tried to visualize it was a clear hint that she liked him a little bit as well. The following day before going to the library to study with Onis, Kogir sees Yashiro kissing a guy on a big bike. Kogir fell asleep while they were studying. Because of his strong affections for her, Onais couldn't help but lean in and offer her a tender kiss. Kogir is stunned to see their lips touching. Onais feels terrible about kissing her, so he apologizes right away and asks Kogir not to forget the times they had. 
Honais felt foolish for initiating the kiss, while Kogur is unclear how to feel about it. Meanwhile, a new transfer student named Nishigaki was introduced to the class. She was a shy and socially awkward girl, which is why she is immediately bullied in her class. But one day, Onis asks her to have lunch with him while Kogur watches from afar. Onis urges her to speak up more so she may gain confidence in connecting with people. He explains that he defends her from bullies since he had the same experience in middle school. At that moment, Nishigeki follows his advice and begins to improve when she joins the basketball club and immediately becomes friends with a couple of girls there. She instantly informs Onis of the good news and thanks him, as Kogur watches them from a distance. Misaki suspects Kogur is jealous of Nishigeki and Onis' connection and goes to check on her. He tells her that Onis was the one who protected him from bullies, who made fun of his dream catcher. He added that Onis was forthright about his feelings and that he always looked after those who were important to him. As a result, he feels it is also time for Kogur to express her emotions. She remembers their days together and realizes how much she likes Onis. Inside the classroom, Kogur sees Onis and Nishigaki. She instantly admits that she likes him and is jealous of him and Nishigaki. Nishigeki reassures Kogur that she has nothing to worry about because they were simply friends in the first place. Kogur continues her confession by saying she was thrilled by their kiss and that she was in love with Onis rather than her uncle Shu. She then invites Onis on a date with the intention of marrying him. This thrilled Onis so much that he took her into his arms and pinched each other's chins to confirm that it was real. After that, they began spending more time together and decided to make things official with Kogur's uncle. Onais tried to look decent by dyeing his hair black and wearing his school uniform. Shu agrees to have some moments with him and requests that Kogur go outside and get some lemons. Onais promises he'll protect her with his life, but Shu doubts it. He informs him about Kogur's sensitivity, how she panics and becomes terrified in unexpected situations because of the pain of losing her parents nine years ago. Onais is followed out of the home by Kogur. He apologizes for his impulsive decision but he honestly intended to protect her with his life. That night, Kogur hears Sho conversing with a former colleague, who offers him the chance to return to the field. Kogur felt miserable, as if she were interfering with Sho's dreams. After a few days of contemplation, Onis tells Kogur that he is ready to redeem himself as Sho. They then notice Yashiro's boyfriend Akumi kissing another woman. Akumi recognizes Onis since he was in a fight with him and his crew around a year ago. He blames Onis for not being allowed to join medical school and take over his father's hospital due to his criminal record. Onis tells him to stay away from Yashiro and almost gets into a fight with him. They try to persuade Yashiro to abandon her relationship with Ikumi, a violent man who physically abuses her and cheats on her. She tells them that the reason she is still with him is because he was there when she was about to give up her life. Misaki attempts to block her path, but Yashiro disregards her friend's advice and storms off. Yashiro then goes to Ikumi's place. Ikumi apologizes for assaulting her and assures her that she is his sole love. He then asks Yashiro a request after declaring their love for one another. The next scenario shows Kogur rushing out after getting a text from Yashiro requesting her to save her in Ikumi's place. When she arrives, she discovers Ikumi and his group waiting for her. Ikumi uses her to get back at Onais, giving him a snapshot of him and Kogur. When he comes, he begs Ikumi not to involve Kogur and take revenge on him without him fighting back. Ikumi accepts the deal, and they nearly beat him to death, but Misaki and Shu arrive just in time, spraying ketchup in Ikumi's eyes. They carried Onais away from Ikumi's house, while Misaki freed Yashiro, who was held captive within a room. Despite his injuries, Onanis used the opportunity to reassure Shu that he was ready to defend Kogur in the same way he did. Onais reveals to her that she really saved him first, when she was the one who offered her the umbrella after a fight in the rain. He was so down and out at the time, and the simple gesture had such an impact on him, that he begs her mother's forgiveness and swears to get better and protect the ones who are important to him, including her. While it pains Shu a little to see Kogur grow stronger even without him, he no longer wants to be in their way. The following day, Ikumi attempts to make up with Misaki by apologizing to her, but Misaki gets in the way of them. Misaki found the courage to tell Yashiro how much he cares for her, and he promised to stand up for people who are important to him as Onis did. In the last scene, Xiao recreates Kogur's joyful memory of learning to ride a bicycle. Holding the bicycle on its back and letting go when she's ready, 
Shu advises her to go ahead and do whatever makes her happy. Onais joins her as they ride their bikes to the beach. Onais offers Kogur a bouquet of flowers at the beach, informing her that after nine years, which was the period of her trauma from losing her parents prior to meeting him, he will bring her flowers asking her to marry him. The story shows us that a tiny act of kindness may go a long way toward bringing you happiness and real affection. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.